greetings and welcome to an LGR thing. And today, I just want to relax a little bit, no script, nothing too involved, and just take a look at some product catalogs, some computer game software booklets and magazine type things that you would get with boxed PC game releases back in the day. Uh, specifically the 90s, it was sort of a golden era for these product catalogs, like this one, the GT Interactive Software Catalog from spring of 1998. High performance GT, whatever that means. And I showed this one not too long ago in my Unreal 20th Anniversary Retrospective, and it just got me in the mood to look at some more catalogs like this, because I enjoy these a whole lot. And I did a video like this, I thought not terribly long ago, but it turns out it's been five years, so I guess that means it's time to do another one. Anyway, here we are. Uh, we're going to take a look at five catalogs overall, starting with this one right here, but I'm also going throughout the rest of my collection and just taking a pick of different boxes. I'm going to pick out four more, these right here, to bring together a total of five different software catalogs from five different companies. I have just an absolute ton of these, but I don't know, I was feeling this particular selection, so yeah. Uh, back to this catalog right here, though, and check it out. Blood to the Chosen wasn't out yet. You never know what's going to be in some of these catalogs. It is just sort of a snippet in time, and especially fun to see these certain releases that I was so enamored with back in the day, like the Duke Nukem Kiloton Collection. I didn't see it in a catalog, I saw it in a Toys R Us for the first time. A friend of mine ended up getting it, I never did. It had a cool t-shirt and everything, and he wore that shirt, and I was like, dang it, you suck, I want that. But anyway, <laughs> one of these days, I'll get that box collection. But yeah, look at all these GT Interactive had. Balls of Steel, Duke Nukem, Shadow Warrior, Oddworld Abe's Odyssey, Total Annihilation, Blood, Nom. That's a pretty neat little game. Unreal, of course. And they were even advertising the Unreal level editor. I guess that was potentially a boxed version of Unreal Ed that they maybe were going to release physically, but I don't believe they ever did. And that's some early box art there for the expansion pack to Unreal, which became Return to Napali. It did not look like that when it came out. And then the other side here. Uh, <laughs> this ad for Duke Nukem Forever just cracked me up as soon as I saw it. I had to put it in that Unreal video, but it's worth looking at once again. Duke Nukem Forever coming in winter of 1998. That would have been amazing. I, I still want to play that version. Ugh. But anyway, I mean, they didn't actually say which winter. They just said winter. So, hey, leave it open for interpretation. Catalogs like this are just, I don't know, they're neat. Let's take a look at another one. And this one I found in the original boxed release of Bullfrog's Syndicate Wars for MS-DOS from 1996. Had a bunch of cool stuff inside, but this catalog is what we're going to be looking at for this moment in time. And check out that website screenshot or photo of sorts on the front there. Was that Netscape or something? Ah, oh, man. Autumn 1996. Ooh, the internet. Just so exciting. Everything about the internet. Oh, my goodness. Although I'm not entirely sure why they have these <laughs> pronunciation guides for EA.cam. Place of interest or www.ea.cam. The biggest brands in PC gaming all under one roof. Yeah, Electronic Arts did have quite a bunch, even in 1996. I don't think they had Westwood or Maxis yet, but uh, yeah, they had Bullfrog, Jane's, Origin, of course, EA themselves. Check out this 90s dude. Everybody was just screaming and angry and like really hyped up on everything all the time in the 90s. That's just how it was. Expect the unexpected. I guess so, but you're telling me what to expect here. Like Dungeon Keeper, Evil is Good. That wasn't even out yet. Some alternate box art, uh, potential box art there. They did not go with that for the retail release, but I do like that art. Yeah, Syndicate Wars, the game that this catalog was packed inside of. Gene Wars, that's a game that I never played. In fact, I still, I don't think I actually own a copy. Yeah, crossbreed your way to universal supremacy. Don't know if it's actually any good or not. It just always seemed intriguing. Theme Hospital wasn't out yet either. <laughs> that's such a great game. And this one I've never heard of, Creation. It's up to you as caretaker of the beautiful, unspoiled creation to implement the spreading of new life throughout the planet's oceans. Did this even come out? I mean, this is one of the questions sometimes you run across in these catalogs like this. Ah, yes, and all the Jane's combat simulations. These were pretty great. I never played Longbow, unfortunately. I always liked uh, Helicopter Sims. I do have it now, I have never made the time to play it. ATF was a good one. So was USNF, 97. Uh, ATF NATO Fighters, never actually played that one either. Privateer 2, The Darkening. 
<laughs> I love titles like that that are just so generically video gamey. The Darkening. You know, The Reckoning. Ah, uh, Wing Commander 4, good stuff. Lots of FMV, like quality FMV. Wing Commander, Kirathi Saga. The coming soon remaster of Wing Commander, was that 1, 2, and 3? Yeah. Speed adjusted, all three games run at normal speed on today's PCs. That did come out, but I've never tried it. Ah, Crusader No Regret. I've been meaning to cover that for a long time alongside No Remorse, but still haven't done it. And Ultima Online, yeah, they don't even have any box art or anything yet. I was never an MMO person, but I remember several people playing it and being like, holy crap, this is the future of everything. Oh yeah, here we go. The Need for Speed Special Edition, seriously fast. They're also mentioning that this is for the 3DO, the PlayStation, and the Saturn, and those are not all equal versions. In fact, the Special Edition only came out for DOS and Windows. And yeah, it looks like they have to qualify that with some of these statements here. It's like, oh, you know, modem and direct link racing is PC only, but the Saturn, or the link up is only for the PlayStation, and oh, you know, you can do all these things with the eight tracks, but there's only three in 3DO, and yeah, they had to shovel it all into one ad, because there's so many versions of Need for Speed. And Road and Track, though, this was a 3DO game as well, and then they converted it to Windows, sort of updated it, and this does not mention the 3DO version at all, so, oh well. Ah, Sherlock Holmes in the Case of the Rose Tattoo. That was an interesting game. I've played it a little bit. Had a lot of pre-rendered backgrounds and stuff that looked pretty cool at the time. 256 color, ooh. And then these CD-ROM classics. You know, these were neat back then because, you know, it didn't have a lot of money and it was just like, hey, I want some EA games for cheap and you could get a lot of cheap EA games. Like these Noctropolis, Privateer, Theme Park, Ultima 8. Eh, whatever. Uh, but you know, all these classics. Extreme Pinball, Bioforge, Magic Carpet, Relentless, Twinsons, you know. A bunch of cool stuff they released on the CD-ROM Classics uh, label, but annoying now as a collector that doesn't want those cheaply made boxes with, like, nothing inside of them. All right, so let's move on to this catalog here. This is the Viacom New Media Catalog, and this arrived inside the box release for MTV's Beavis and Butthead in Virtual Stupidity for Windows 95. It's actually a pretty darn good adventure game. And it came with a catalog, so that's what we're going to take a look at. Viacom New Media, that's a company that I don't really talk about. In fact, I don't know if I've ever talked about it on LGR, but I find them fascinating because they had a bunch of different properties that you may not associate with Viacom first and foremost. I like Zoop. I remember that sort of an action puzzly thing for yeah all sorts of systems. Mostly I remember the console versions. I don't know if I've ever even played a PC one, but it existed, I guess. And of course, the aforementioned Beavis and Butthead and Virtual Stupidity. Oh, it's supposed to be a CD-ROM misadventure game or something. We got Star Trek Deep Space Nine Harbinger. Never played it, but I'd know that the package was really cool. It had this super awesome design. I still want to try to find one of those boxes. It, it looked like a physical kind of... I don't know, it's a cool box. Kong with a movie. Never played that. I remember being underwhelmed by the movie, though. MTV Unplugged. See, that's something that's kind of different that you don't really think about getting, but yeah, there was an MTV Unplugged, uh, not a game, but sort of a software package. Shows and performances and all this by Eric Clapton and Paul McCartney and R.E.M. and all sorts of people on CD-ROM. There's another Sherlock Holmes game unrelated to the other series that EA was doing. This is the Consulting Detective series by ICOM. Volumes 1, 2, and 3. I only have the third one. And of course, they also had the Nickelodeon stuff going on. So Nick Jr. here, where kids play to learn, play math. I don't know what that is. I don't recognize those characters. <laughs> but sure, why not? I do recognize that, though. Ah, Real Monsters. They had a game for the Sega Genesis and the Super NES. Never played that. Never was like a console kid. Never had consoles until much later on. And I got to Nickelodeon Director's Lab, one of many, many director-type software, along with, you know, Director's Chair and Opening Night and American Girls Premiere and uh, Storybook Weaver to a degree. There were so many of those, but Nickelodeon had theirs as well. That one would probably be kind of fun. Uh, that was a neat adventure kind of game there. Are You Afraid of the Dark? The Tale of Orfeo's Curse? Orfeo? I don't know. But it has state-of-the-art animation and over 400 graphics. And 1,500 3D rendered images, ooh. The Indian in the Cupboard. That sure was a movie and a book. A little bit of both, column A, column B. Did not know that there was a game, or at least there was going to be at one point or something. Phantom 2049, I don't know what that is, but I like the art. Was it based on the animated TV series? Oh, Phantom 2040, <laughs> not 2049, I'm thinking of Blade Runner. 
Uh, yeah, rich or scary in busy town, how things work in busy town, rather. It's an interesting one, uh, developed by Novo Trade, if I recall. I recently um, was just sort of diving into them because of Edutainment Month and them doing uh, Museum Madness. There's going to be an Eon Flux game, apparently. Hmm. Huh. Coming 96. Maybe there was, and I'm just not aware of it. I don't remember one. And then Star Trek Voyager coming in 96. That's vague. There were definitely Voyager games, but like not in 96 if I... I don't, I don't remember any. I don't know. And we got Zoop again. Just sort of bookending this little booklet. Zoop. Zoop, Zoop. Okay, moving on to another catalog here. This one is pretty substantial. This is the Sierra Winter Catalog for 94 going into 95. And this comes from inside the box of Outpost. Oft Maligned was potentially interesting, but ended up being kind of eh. Not a huge fan of the game, but I certainly am glad that it came with this catalog because, uh, well, actually, this was also in the box. And uh, yeah, Sierra didn't always release catalogs inside of their game boxes. It was often taken care of by Interaction Magazine. It was Sierra's own periodical. <laughs> and these were really cool. I mean, it was like a proper magazine. It had interviews and articles and, of course, uh, product coverage everywhere. But I do have a few Sierra catalogs. This is one of them. It's still kind of structured like a magazine, though. You've got this introduction from Mr. Ken Williams and his magnificent mustache, as you always did in all these Sierra things. And it's got a table of contents laid out very much like a magazine. This is almost like a mini uh, interaction issue. Aces of the Deep, one of many, many Aces games, as well as the first Earth Siege. Love that game. A Dynamics classic. All these simulations. Honestly, I associated Sierra more with simulations than I did, say, adventure games back in the day, because, I don't know, that's just what I was into more than just about anything else. You know, A-10, Tank Killer, Red Baron, uh, more of the Aces games. Looking to get a VHS with that one. Outpost. Absolutely the best science fiction software ever published. I disagree with that random magazine, but, you know, a lot of potential in Alien Legacy as well. I still never played that. I did pick up a box copy a while back. I want to play it because it kind of looks like some of the aesthetic of Outpost, but different kind of game. Battle Bugs. That one's really neat. Picked that one up at Goodwill in the 39th episode of LGR Thrifts, I believe. The front page sports games I never played. Because honestly, they looked a little bit boring from the front covers. They looked like a newspaper. It's like, who wants the newspaper game? But I don't like the gameplay itself looks pretty cool. I don't know. I'd like to try them out eventually. Ah, Battle Drome. Yes. A sort of spinoff or... I'm not really sure how you'd qualify that, but it's in the Earth Siege universe. You got Herx and stuff instead of mechs, just like Earth Siege. Uh, sort of a one-on-one -on -one combat game, though. Load Runner The Legend Returns. Love that game. Although I was more into the follow-up of sorts, the online version of just Load Runner Online Mad Monk's Revenge, but it's really just this. They just expanded it and re-released it. <laughs> and here we go, King's Quest VII. Magical adventures that will touch your heart. Or they'll at least touch your patience. It does, that doesn't make sense. There was a definite problem with these early releases of King's Quest VII. Like, I have a couple of them, the two variants. They had different box art. There was this one, which honestly I think is the better box art. And they had one where it was like a castle, you know, the lightning on front. And yeah, there was like a one point something other patch on a disc. And there's a 2.0. And man, King's Quest Collector's Edition. That's a really neat pack. Comes with a lot of cool stuff inside of it. King's Quest VI, of course, is just a friggin' classic. Uh, same with King's Quest V. I like that they put the good box art on there. There is a really crappy version of the box art for that game. Got a little write-up here in Roberta Williams. Yeah, like this, this really is looking like an interaction magazine, but just a lot smaller. Phantasmagoria. Now there's a game. A sinister game in the style of Edgar Allan Poe, Alfred Hitchcock, and Stephen King. You know, that's one way to put it. Ah yes, Leisure Suit Larry. Leisure Suit Larry 6, very enjoyable little game. I mean, you know, they're all enjoyable in their own weird ways. Those games are, they're, they're, they're what they are. <laughs> Same with Freddy Farkas. I mean, you know, there's there's parts to enjoy about it. Uh, I can say that with a lot of these. A lot of these games. Open season, yeah, like, good grief. Talk about some uh, controversies. Gabriel Knight. What a fantastic box that came in originally. I have the other one, too, like the more basic looking box, but that one's just amazing with the trapezoid kind of, you know, dual triangle thing going on. It was great. Quest for Glory, Shadows of Darkness. Never played that one, but the Quest for Glory game has a lot to offer, and each 
iteration, so I imagine there's something to like about that one. I don't know. I've never played it. Space Quest Collector's Edition, digging this artwork. How much are these, by the way? I was not noticing. Yeah, the Collector's Edition was 60 bucks. All right. Oh yeah, here we're getting into uh, got a couple of Cocktail Vision games. We got Inca and Inca 2. Always loved the box art to the first Inca, especially. Ah, uh, Dagger of Amun Ra. Super good game, the second of the Laura Bow series. Lost in Time, another Cocktail Vision thing. Never played this one at all. I don't think I own that one. Hmm. Adventures of Willie Beamish. I quite like that. It's got its flaws and whatnot, but a really cool adventure game by Dynamics. Goblins! There's only one eye there. I only have the first one. That's really the only one I have any experience with. But yeah, if you like strange humor and really cool art, object puzzles and you know, logic puzzles, you know, uh, they're interesting games. Not quite adventure games, not quite pure puzzle games. They're just, they're interesting. Betrayal of Crondor, heck yeah. I don't know, man. There's something about those that I was always drawn to. I never played them much, but yeah, I need to play more of those. Shadow of Serbius. I do have that. Unfortunately, I don't think you can make use of the online component anymore. The in network, I-N-N. -N. Yeah, I had an online thing going on with that one. Incredible Tune Machine. I've still never played this one. And then there was also like Sid and Owl's Incredible Tunes. I believe that was a separate product, but maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Johnny Castaway, classic screensaver thing, which is a little bit more than just your typical screensaver. It told a story. I've been meaning to cover that forever. Dang it, I need to do that. Incredible Machine 2. Very much just Incredible Machine all over again. Ah, uh, here we go. Check this box out. I've always wanted to get this. The even more Incredible Machine. That top of this just sort of moves around in there, and it's like a machine in and of itself. What a cool box. And all these other kind of things that Sierra was releasing. Hoyle Classic Card Games, Take a Break Crosswords, Take a Break Pinball. Like I have all these too, but it's just like, <laughs> for the most part, who cares? Like, this was not a great pinball game. Or at least I never thought it was back then compared to, like, 3D Ultra Pinball, but... It's a little unfair to directly compare them, but it's okay. Stellar 7, Draxon's Revenge. Never played that at all. Played the original Stellar 7, but this was like on the, yeah, was the, getting into the Sega CD slash 3DO area of the catalog. Stellar Fire, you know, I've pretty much never played any of these. Oh, Beamish, yes. And Rise of the Dragon, but not in the CD. And a little section for parents. Choosing the right software for your child. Look for games that match your child's learning stage, pick software that's educational and entertaining, otherwise known as edutainment. Look for a point-and-click interface. <laughs> There's nothing that pleases a child more than saying, I can do it all by myself. With point-and-click interfaces, children will be able to play the games even if they don't know how to type or read yet. All right. And these kids' things. Beginning reading, alphabet blocks. I've never heard of those. Early math. Mixed up Mother Goose, of course, I've heard of. That's pretty classic. Kids typing. Yeah, Mega Math, Spelling Blizzard, Spelling Jungle. So many things. Eco Quest, there's one I've been wanting to get for a long time. Castle Dr. Brain, classic. Island of Dr. Brain, heck yeah. Get the CD advantage. Flip through any computer magazine, you'll see that CDs are quickly revolutionizing the way we think, or uh, the way, <laughs> yeah, that too. What we work and play with PCs. So what's the hype about? Gosh. One CD can hold up to 600 megabytes, the equivalent of over 400 floppy disks. I love mid-90s CD-ROM excitement. This is just the beginning. Every day, CD technology opens up tremendous new opportunities to make electronic adventures more creative, complex, and exciting than all, man, CDs. I was like this with Sierra, too. If for any reason you're not pleased with any product, return it within 30 days. A friend of mine got a couple things replaced and was like, no problem whatsoever. Just, you know, upgraded to a... CD-ROM version for like five bucks or something like that. They had a floppy disk. Anyway, Sierra, good times. And then lastly, I want to look at this catalog that was found in the box of Zork Zero, a graphic Infocom interactive fiction game for the Apple II and other systems released in 1988. As you can see here, this one has a bit of a different shape. It folds up like this to fit in the box, but and it opens up more like a size of a proper magazine. Infocom's new graphics will blow you out of the water like that. Oh yeah. I love pre-Activision Infocom products. They went all out every step of the way, you know, with feelies and catalogs and manuals and just really cool packaging boxes. Just amazing company back before Activision went all Activision on them. <laughs> Their products got re-released a lot cheaper and whatever. But anyway, this is the catalog here. We've got 
the ad for Zork Zero, a much more graphical take on the classic Zork series. I just recently completed my original uh, collection. Well, not it's not the original releases of Zork, but it's the ones that came in the... Anyway, I'll show them at some point. They're really cool boxes. And I've been wanting to find all of them. Anyway, here we go. Let's just keep opening it up because it, it just keeps going. And here's an ad right in the middle here for James Clavel's Shogun. I've never played that, but apparently this was one of the games to sort of introduce people to the Infocom graphic style. They were really getting their butt handed to them by Sierra and whatnot, so yeah, it's no wonder that they were trying to move on to this graphic future. Ooh, no more text only. Looks pretty cool though. I like I like the art there. That interlaced uh, image that they have going on there is pretty neat. Those, I mean, they look like actual just photographs <laughs> of the monitor. Journey. Never played this one either. In fact, I, I pretty much have never played any of. Oh, I played this one, but I've not played many of the graphic Infocom things. It's sort of an unfortunate gap in my experience with computer gaming. It was just never a company that I was too familiar with growing up, and so any exposure that I've had to them has been collecting them as an adult and playing them whenever I get a chance, but I hear good things about several of them. I don't really know anything about Journey, but yeah, Battletech, Crescent Hawks, Inception. Have played this one. Any FASA Battletech tie-in I am all for, and these came out uh, before the Mech Warrior games or anything like that. It's Battletech, Crescent Hawks, Inception, followed up by Crescent Hawks Revenge. Uh, both of those, they're really neat games worth worth checking out. Now here's one I don't even know if I've heard of. Quarterstaff, the Tomb of Setmuth. Three months ago, the tree druid colony vanished without a trace. A search party is sent to discover what fate befell these peaceful people and to save any who may survive. The first computer role-playing game to capture the mood and feel of pen and paper RPGs. The first? I mean, if you say so, Infocom. <laughs> and it's just sort of letting you know all the different things that they're doing, and plus they have some classics. Like uh, Leather Goddesses of Phobos, Hitchhikers, <laughs> Hitchhikers, Guide to the Galaxy, Plunotfall, and Wishbronger. Yeah, man, you can get those for 15 bucks. I, I believe these were the cheaper packaging. And then we had the Info Comics, it was, you know, comic books, really, in a computer y form. It was neat at the time. Sophisticated cinematic effects like panning, zooming, and animation. Wow! Panning and zooming. And yeah, there's a price list for all these, so. Infocom. Infocom. All right, well, pretty much it for this video. I really just wanted to take a look at a handful of rather randomly chosen catalogs. <laughs> just, just, you know, I don't know. So I hope that you uh, found these enjoyable to take a look through with me. And if you did, let me know. I like doing these things every so often, you know, every four or five years, apparently. And if this is not your kind of thing, then I guess now you know. I got plenty of other stuff posted and more to come as always, every Monday and Friday here on LGR. So as always, thank you very much for watching.